The Prophet, as he became widely known to his followers and foes alike, emerged from the ruins of Sindarak city in the wake of the battle between the Goliaths and the Esher. On a planet overrun with mad men and hive preachers, he might well have just become one more crazed voice in the crowd, had it not been for the strange relic he carried. The ancient remains of a redemptor priest held aloft on a pole. The relic was surrounded by a palpable aura of devotion, and those who looked upon it felt as if the god emperor himself stood before them. Such was the faith it inspired. Among his followers, the prophet is variously believed to be a reincarnation of Encordius Brain, the first leader of the redemption, or perhaps a manifestation of the lost saint to whom many redemptionists offer up their prayers, sent to carry the relic and the word to the people. To his enemies, he is denounced as a demon masquerading as a leader of the faith, or a Xenos infiltrator working psychic magic upon his flock. The truth, as is often the case, might lie somewhere between the two. It is said that the prophet speaks to the relic. Pilgrims often observe the two conversing, albeit with the prophet doing most of the talking. The word of the prophet, the blessed voice that can sway crowds and turn the faithless into the faithful, is believed to come from this relic. Though he carries only the skeletal remains of the saint and the banner they rest atop, the prophet can walk into battle with little fear for his life. Enemies that try to bring harm to them find themselves overcome by his di- 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 Though he carries only the skeletal remains of the saint and the banner they rest atop, the prophet can walk into battle with little fear for his life. Enemies that try to bring him harm find themselves overcome by his divine presence and either lower their weapons or shoot wide at the last moment. Such is his power that he can direct an enemy with a word and only the most strong will can resist. In this way, his followers have observed him turn grizzled gang leaders against their own or even stay rabid animals intent on slaughter. The greatest strength the prophet possesses, however, is doubtless the zealousness he inspires to those around him. To simply stand in the presence of the prophet and his relic is to know utter conviction and devotion to the redemption, such that choosing to give up one's life to save that of their holy leader is a decision made with no thought or reservation at all. Hello boys and girls and welcome back to Wellywood Wargaming. My name is Damon and this is the series where I give you all of the agents of Necromunda in a bite-sized video format. Before I get started, please do a like, share, subscribe, check out the Patreon and support the channel any way that you can. The Prophet, Outlaw House Agent. This one is an awesome one. Um, you can find the rules for The Prophet in the second Aranthian Succession book, Vaults of Temenos, I believe. Uh, and this guy is really, really fucking bananas, basically. Um, unfortunately, there is no official miniature for this guy. I'd love to... I'm, I'm sure Games Workshop are going to release a miniature for this guy. They have to. It's such a cool character with such interesting lore. The illustration there is fantastic as well. Um, you know, the guy's got a body on a stick uh, as, you know, as his best mate. So, um, you know, what's not to like about that? Absolute nutcase. Is he an alien? Is he chaotic? Is he just a, a particularly weird guy? Um, who fucking knows? I, I'd like to see the miniature to give me more indication of more about this guy. We don't really know much about the Prophet. He's a particularly enigmatic and awesome character. But, you know, w w what's going on with this guy? He's got, he's got a body on a stick uh, uh, and he speaks to it. So that's cool. Um, so if you were to petition the, uh, this, this guy, he is an outlaw. He's only available for outlaw gangs. If you were to petition him, he is 80 credits at the cheapest and 160 credits at the most. He's very, very different to any other agent or any other hired gun in the game uh, in that he has no weapons, um, which is pretty cool. I think there are a couple of others with no weapons, but they're usually psychers and stuff. This guy is not a psyker. Um, he just offers something very, very different to your gangs. Let's have a look at the stats now, though. He's movement eight. Now, I can't figure out why he's movement eight. I'll tell you what, he's got a servo harness, so we'll get into that in a minute. But the servo harness doesn't boost your movement, um, you know, at all. But this guy's movement eight. So he's a very fast running guy with no shoes on who's got a guy on a stick, a body on a stick. Um, yet he moves movement eight. I can't figure out why, but I love fast moving fighters in any case. In, in, in Necromunda, I just love fast things. Um, 
you know, particularly for climbing and jumping over stuff. I just think it's great. So move moving 16 inches. Uh, this guy's pretty damn fast, let's be honest. One of the fastest baseline stats, if, if not the fastest baseline stat in the whole game that isn't a vehicle or a mount. Um, so he's weapon skill 4, ballistic skill 4. So he's got average weapon skill and ballistic skill. Uh, he's strength 5, he's toughness 4. Those are high because he has the servo, the full servo harness as well, and these benefits are already included in his fighter profile. So strength 5, toughness 4. He's wounds 2, which isn't as high as I'd like. I'd like to have him to have 3 wounds, seeing as he's such an important character. Initiative 4 up, which is average, and only 1 attack. So... Yeah, uh, interesting stats there, I have to say. Uh, mental stats are as follows. We've got leadership of 5+, plus, which is fantastic, and a cool willpower and intelligence of 6+. plus. So excellent mental stats on all of those. That's the profit stats. Uh, the movement 8, really, really shining, but really puzzling me there. I can't figure out why. Please do comment down below and let me know exactly why he's got a movement 8. It's a weird one. Is he on a bike? I don't think so. Uh, he comes with Iron Will, which is fantastic, especially if you use this guy as a leader in an Outcast gang, which you could do. Uh, Iron Will just adds one to your bottle check rolls, basically, meaning that your gang of five guys counts as six guys, your gang of nine guys counts as ten guys, whatever. Um, it's a pretty good skill. Um, it always feels kind of like shortchanging when you're taking it in your gangs, uh, but you, for an elite gang, it's really important, I have to say. Uh, in a cordial gang, not so important, seeing as you tend to have much more in the way of fighters. He's also got Overseer, which is an excellent skill. Obviously, that's been nerfed with the new version of the rules so that it is now a leadership check to pull it off. However, this guy's got a leadership of 5+, plus, which means that on 2d6, you're pretty much always passing that 5-up leadership check fantastic so iron will excellent overseer excellent he's also got unstoppable which is another excellent ferocity skill there as well meaning that you can get back some of your flesh wounds in the game uh, when you've got toughness four that's pretty cool um, it just makes you a bit more survivable and the only piece of equipment that he's got no armor no weapons as i mentioned he's got the full servo harness and the benefits for that were in those stats there as well representing the, the strength the initiative and the toughness i think now He's got a bunch of special rules, and obviously this is where this is where it all comes in, I suppose. So, blessed by the lost saints. The prophet seems to lead a blessed life. None can act against him, either looking upon him with awe or finding they purposefully miss. If an enemy model wishes to make a fight basic or shoot basic action that targets the prophet, they must make a willpower check. If the check is failed, they cannot perform the action, and their action ends immediately. In addition, the Prophet has a 3 plus save that cannot be modified or ignored by any rule. So that makes up for the fact that he has no armor. He has got a 3 plus invulnerable save, which is just absolutely excellent. I think that's better than Cal Jericho's as well off the top of my head. Again, correct me if I'm wrong there. 3 plus invulnerable save makes up for only having two wounds perhaps there. Um, but he is effectively a corpse grinder butcher, or he has pretty much a corpse going to mask there, meaning that you've got to take a willpower check to even shoot him or fight him. Fantastic. Both of those rules are incredibly powerful. We also have two more um, special rules here. We have Beacon of Redemption. Any friendly fighter that can draw a line of sight to the Prophet, line of sight, no range on this, may apply a plus two modifier to call and willpower checks in the whole game. So that is an excellent one as well. There's no bubble there. There's no range. Usually these things are like six to nine inches. This guy, though, if you can see him anywhere on the battlefield, which is quite easy when he's got, like, a guy on a stick, um, you know, then you get plus two to your cool and willpower checks, which is excellent. You know, if, you're, if you've got a gang of scum, suddenly their cool and willpower goes from eight to six up, which is dramatically a lot better. Um, he also generates articles of faith as well. If hired by a house court or gang, the prophet generates faith dice as normal house court or fighter. However, his faith is such that in each end phase, his controlling player rolls 4d6 for him rather than the usual one and he follows the path of the fanatic of course because he is a fucking nutcase um what's not to like about the prophet i just think he's awesome he's, there's so much flavor there i i think i'm going to make an outcast gang and use this guy as the leader now if i'm gonna do that 80 credits at the cheapest, 160 credits at the most as a agent. But how do you cost this guy? That's something that you're going to need to have a word with your arbitrators about. I'm not sure. I think I would just start with totaling up the sort of stat line there. Uh, maybe the stat line is not too dissimilar to some of the outcast leader profiles. So you could start with their cost and then just add the skills as a cost each for like 
20, 30 credits or whatever they are, and then add the full cost of the servo harness as well, maybe bump it up by another 50 credits. You're probably going to end up around 300 credits, I'd say, maybe even more. Um, but he's such an interesting and strange character that I'd really like to use this guy in a sort of proto-Cordor redemptionist outcast gang. So maybe I'll do that. Uh, so watch this space. Anyway, that's enough for the profit and that's enough of my absolute rambling and waffling. I will be back with the last, yes, the last in the Agent series next. Uh, I'll catch you in a bit. Peace out.